Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Glad you could make it. Glad to have you back once again. Today we are going to talk about the construction industry's dirtiest little secret. But before we do that, we are going to ask to do the usual thing. We're going to ask you to like and subscribe to the channel. Just hit that little subscription button because that helps to grow the channel. So again, thanks very much and we're going to get right into the video. Pretty much anywhere on the internet you can go and you will see lots of channels talking about the constructions that they do. You will see many, many channels talking about how to design a nice house and where to put it and all of that sort of thing. There are very, very few channels, very, very few articles on one of the most important important aspects of your construction and that is your sewage system. Now we're talking about sewage systems in Jamaica and particularly in less developed countries. In North America and Europe and other more developed countries this may be relevant in terms of some out of the way country areas and so on but it's not as relevant given the fact that sewage is generally connected to a centralized system in those areas. So we are going to talk about what we need and and what you would need specifically if you were constructing a house in Jamaica. And even in Jamaica, you are going to find that in the cities, you are going to be connected to the central sewage system. So this may or may not be relevant to you in some areas. Although in many areas where you are connected to the sewage system, this is not a bad idea also, given the fact that some people like to build a little bit off the beaten path. Now, a little bit of background on how a sewage system is generally constructed in Jamaica. Generally, what you have in Jamaica is something called a soak-away pit. Now, a soak-away pit is, I would think it's one of the oldest sorts of sewage system there is. It's a big hole in the ground. It's covered over. Sewage is dumped into it, and that is it. Aerobic bacteria generally decomposes the sewage. Part of it goes off as gases, and the other part settles as solids. And uh, that goes on for a while until the pit is full. Then you dig another one. The problem, of course, with that is that you just may not have the space to dig another pit, depending on where you live, what the size of your lot is, and the other factors, including the ground may not um, allow you to dig another pit. Now, in Jamaica, soak away pits have generally been constructed like this one that you, you we're now looking at here. It's usually a very deep hole in the ground, somewhere between 20, 25, 30 feet deep. It is then packed around conically, because it's usually uh, cylindrical or round. It is then packed around with stones. The packing is a very, very dangerous procedure, and people have been killed doing it. The other thing is that the people who know how to do this are usually the older people, and those are becoming fewer and far between. The other thing is that even when it is done properly, it is still a very dangerous dangerous thing. The first instance is that usually the stones that are used to pack it are not very, very closely packed. That can result in the sides of the pit collapsing. And it being a very deep pit, what will happen whenever there's heavy rain and so on, areas in and around the stones do become eroded. This then leads to the stones settling. Now, usually there is a concrete pad that is put on top of that. But if the stones have settled, the concrete pad will then settle and that leads to an unstable situation and many times that that concrete pad actually collapses into the pit with very very disastrous consequences in many occasions. There is also the undermining issue. It will rain depending on where the pit is located, where it is situated. There will be runoff water that will undermine and get into the pit. The pit will then overflow when there is heavy rain spilling sewage all over, which is a very, very bad situation. So for those reasons, this type of soak away pit is not ideal. Now, the other reason you would want to move away from that sort of soak away pit is necessity. In many instances, you do not have the space or the soil is not conducive to digging these very, very deep holes. And in some instances, even when the soil is conducive to digging the hole, 
the soil itself is clay-like and so the soak away effect is not as great as it could have been leading to the pit overflowing again when there is heavy rain with the aforementioned disastrous consequences but in any case basically there are times when you just cannot dig a very deep pit which now leads me to what we are going to talk about we are going to talk about what is called a chambered sewage system a chambered septic system is a much better alternative to the generally used and more common soak away pit that is used in Jamaica so to begin the construction of what is called your chambered septic system usually what is done is a rectangular concrete hole is constructed in ground that rectangular container that is constructed in ground is usually around five feet deep by about 10 or 12 feet long and about six feet wide that means that you do not need to dig a very deep hole in the ground this rectangular container is usually constructed using cement blocks and those cement blocks are of course filled with high strength concrete to form a completely watertight container that container is then roughly divided into two three or four segments for our purposes and what we're going to show you just now we are going to use one that is divided into three segments each section is called a settling chamber the idea behind the settling chamber is that sewage will go into the first chamber and most of the solids will then settle out into the lower section or the bottom of that first chamber the sewage will then overflow into a second chamber and will then still contain some sewage. The solids that are still contained in that second chamber will then settle out into that second chamber. And as that second chamber fills, it then overflows into your third chamber. And that would be your final settlement chamber. Now, by the time it gets to that final settlement chamber, most of the solids will have settled to the bottom of that third settlement chamber. So when that third settlement chamber then overflows, the water that is coming out of that third and last settlement chamber will then be relatively clear and free of sewage and solids. Now, having spoken about the chamber settling and overflowing from one chamber to the other let us look at the details of how this is actually accomplished first thing to understand is that this is a gravity fed system but to back up a little bit let us understand one other thing when the sewage or the effluent enters the first chamber it is mixed with things like fats and other things that will float now even when some solids do settle to the bottom of the chamber there will be solids also floating on top now what we do not want happening is those solids on top of the liquid simply overflowing into the next chamber so to prevent this from happening that is the reason the outflow pipe is in the shape of a T now as you can clearly see the lower section of that T extends below the level of the water and that allows the outflow pipe to suck water from below the level of the contaminants and particles that are floating on top of the water in that way very few particles are solids get transferred to the next chamber so if we are now to take a look at the partition between chamber number one and chamber number two you will notice that the pipe that leads from chamber number one to chamber number two the level of that pipe is just below the intake level that comes into chamber number one this prevents the fluids from backing up into the intake from chamber number one now as you go over over to chamber number two you will notice that the outflow pipe from chamber number two to chamber number three is also below the intake pipe of chamber number two so when chamber number two gets to that level of the output pipe from chamber number two it will not overflow and back up into chamber number one 
So this is a very clever system where because the output pipe from each chamber is lower than the input pipe to that same chamber, the chamber itself cannot back up into the previous chamber because each chamber can only fill to the level of the lowest output pipe. So if that low output pipe is lower than the input pipe, it just cannot back up. So back to the pipes themselves, you will notice that each pipe is, as I said before, is in the form of a T. Now the top section of the pipe is open and so is the bottom section. The top section of the pipe is open to allow atmospheric pressure to act on both sides of the water, preventing a vacuum from forming. So it does not create a vacuum when the water tries to go up from below into the pipe and that allows the entire system to flow freely. Now of course after you have uh, settled this water and made it into more or less cleaner water, it has to go somewhere and usually Usually what it goes into is something called a leach field. Now a leach field is just another way of saying it's a soak away field. This is also known as a drain field unless there is some sort of an overflow or something like that. There really will not be that much water at any given time that is going to be flowing out of the system. The amount of water that is going to be flowing out of the system is going to be about the same amount that is going to be going in. You wash your hands, you take a shower, you flush the toilet. You can imagine that would be about the amount of water that is going to be flowing out of the system. This is what the leach field or the soak away field does. There are two ways of doing this. One is called a vertically stacked drain field and the other one is called a horizontally stacked drain field. Now the vertically stacked drain field is actually dead simple. It's almost like a soak away pit in that you would take something like a 12 inch pipe anywhere from 30 to 50 inches long and you would dig a hole where that 12 inch pipe can fit down into the ground and you would maybe have about four or five of those and sink them anywhere on the property that is convenient. You would perforate those pipes all around so that when water goes into that pipe and if the pipe should begin to fill up then of course the water would drain out of those perforations and into the soil. The soil itself would then clean up that water as it goes out. It then becomes almost like a soak away pit except you do not have all the effluent and sewage in inside of that. So it is a much safer design than simply just having a simple soak away pit like that. The advantage of having a vertically stacked leach field or drain field is that it takes up a whole lot less space because it is vertically stacked so it goes directly down into the ground and so the amount of horizontal space that it takes up is a whole lot less. It can be placed virtually anywhere since all you need is a lead pipe from your outlet. If you have trees or or you have very rocky soil where you cannot have a lot of straight running ditches then the vertically stacked drain field is the better option. You may also live on very hilly area and so a vertically stacked drain field may be more convenient because you could place one pretty much anywhere on the property where it is convenient to dig a hole that is say around 50 inches deep. The other design is what's called the horizontal leach field or horizontal drain field. It is essentially the same idea. But in this one, you can use very small pipes, ordinary pipes, your half an inch pipe or your one inch pipe. And you would spread these out over a very wide area coming from the outlet of your sewage system. You would then dig trenches that would be about 30 or 40 inches deep because you want them to be as deep as possible. You would then put sand and gravel into those trenches, then wrap your pipes in fabric and lay those pipes inside of those trenches. Of course the pipes are perforated. The perforated pipes would be connected to the outlet from your sewage system and you then cover those over with your sand and gravel and as the water now filters out of your perforated pipe and through your sand and gravel, the sand and gravel acts as a further filter for the contaminated or no slightly cleaned up water. Additionally on the outside of of that sand and gravel you will have what is called anaerobic bacteria. This bacteria form on the outside of the pipe and the gravel and it further cleans up the water. This anaerobic bacteria then act on the remaining pathogens that are in the water making the water good to use for things like watering vegetable or watering the lawn. So you can now have your drain field being 30-40 inches below ground level and you have your sand 
sand and gravel packed on top of that. You can then pack your soil on top of that. And on top of that, you can now plant your vegetable or you can plant your lawn grass or even small shrubberies and all of that sort of thing because you know, the water has now been made completely safe and usable for watering your garden and ordinary things like that. Now, why would you want to install this system as opposed to a normal soakaway system? Now, if you're in, in a city or in a town area where there is a system to empty your soakaway pit, what this does is ensure that one, your system is easily accessible and two, it ensures that the amount of sewage that you will need to remove from your sewage system will be far less than you would normally have to remove from your soak away pit and it is much more accessible because it is a very shallow pit it is also much cheaper to build and there's also another advantage to building this sort of system because as we started out by telling you there are a number of chambers and it is all gravity fed obviously all the chambers do not have to be the same size they all do not have to be in the exact same area and they all do not have to be attached to each other they all do not have to be made out of concrete either in fact they can be made out of plastic and they can be made out of whatever plastic container you have so if you have a round plastic container that is big enough and you have a square plastic container that is big enough you can in fact use those as your various chambers so let us say you are on the side of a hill and it is rather steep you could use as your first settling chamber a smaller concrete chamber that you could build say you can build that on the side of a hill now let us say that you don't have enough space in ground to build another one you can then run this downhill and connect a plastic chamber downhill from that one and connect it to the first one with a simple pipe and you can do that again until you reach downhill presuming you are on a very steep incline as an example even if you are not on a steep incline of but your space is limited you can place the various settling chambers at different places because they do not have to be in line they do not have to be attached to each other and they do not have to be the same size or shape so it is a very versatile system. You can have one part being plastic, one part being concrete, and the last part, because you can have two chambers being your simple vertical drain field. So the system is extremely versatile and it is a more modern way of doing things. And I would just like to add one last thing, just by way of showing you how cheap and how simple this system is. This entire system can be constructed using only three 48 by 48 by 48 plastic totes. That is all you would need, plus your pipes to connect them together. You dig your hole, you sink them in the ground, and Bob's your uncle, depending on the space you have. But it is a very easy, very, very cheap system. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this was very, very helpful. I hope I was able to give you some idea of what the alternatives are and what a better, more modern, sewage system could look like if you decided to go that route and hope I was able to help the people who had been thinking that you had a problem and you didn't know how to solve it and uh, again hope that was very helpful I'm just saying my piece and do not forget to like subscribe and share the videos and as usual thanks for watching and you all have a great day